Hello there, welcome to the October 2020 paper 2. Here we're looking at question 7. Figure 1 shows a sketch of the curve C with the equation of this expression here. I'll show you figure 1 uh, on the next page. Show that dy by dx equals this expression here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my expression for y in a more integratable form. So I'm going to make two fractions out of this, one fraction here and one fraction here. So the first one is going to be 2, and then it's x to the power of 2 divided by x to the power of half. So subtract your powers here, and you get 3 over 2. Plus uh, half, because it's 1 over 2, and then it's x to the power of 1 divided by x to the power of half, so that's subtraction powers, and you get x to the power of half. Then it's going to be minus 4 ln x. Now we can start differentiating, because it's in a more differentiable form. So times your power to the front, and that will give you 3x to the power of half, plus a quarter x to the power of minus a half, and then minus uh, ln x differentiated is 1 over x, so it's 4 over x. OK, what I think we'll do then is we'll now start to create uh, common denominators. But first, maybe we'll write them back in terms of square roots, etc. So it's going to be um, 3 root x plus 1 over 4 root x plus 4 over x. So it looks like a common denominator here of 4x root x. That's kind of like a clue in the answer. So I'm going to make that uh, the common denominator of all three terms here. So on the bottom of all of them, it's now going to be 4x root x. On this one here, it doesn't have a denominator at the moment, so I need to multiply by everything on this denominator here to this expression here. So it needs to be 12 on the number, because it's now 12 divided by 4, which is 3. And then root x times all of this stuff here, that's going to be x times root x. Root x times root x will be x, so it's actually going to be x squared that will be the final part of this first bit here. The second bit here already has the 4 and the root x, so that bit would just be x. And this uh, last bit here already has the x on the denominator, so now it's going to have to be 16 and a root x. Uh, and there's a plus there, yep, because I silly changed my plus for a, min a minus for a plus. And there we are, that's our final answer to this question here. Let's now move on to part B. The point P in figure 1 is a minimum turning point of C. Show that the coordinate uh, of P is a solution of this equation here. So what we've got to now do is solve 12x squared plus x minus 12 roots, so 16 root x over 4x root x equals 0. Now, to get the ball rolling, whenever you've got a fraction that equals 0, it must be the denominator, so it must be the numerator that equals 0. Any fraction you can think of, it doesn't matter what the denominator is, it's always the numerator that will equal 0. So the first thing I'll do is I'll sort it out to that. OK, so the next thing I need to do then is divide everything by the square root of x. We can clearly see here that x is not equal to 0, so the valid step here of dividing by root x is allowed. So if I divide by root x, it's going to be 12 x to the power of 3 over 2 plus uh, root x on this bit here, and then minus 16 equals 0. Let's now move all of this, these right two stuff here. Let's move this stuff here onto the other side. So it's going to be 12x to the power of 3 over 2 equals 16 minus root x. So you can see it forming shape now. Divide by the uh, 12, and that's going to give us 4 over 3 minus root x over 12, and then we will do the reverse of the power of 3 over 2, and the reverse of the power of 3 over 2 is the power of 2 thirds. Or you can effectively think of it as squaring both sides to get rid of this denominator here, and then cube rooting both sides to get rid of the 3 on the numerator of that power. So it's therefore x equals 4 over 3 minus root x over 12, to the power of two-thirds. 
So there we are, that's the answer for part B. Let's move on to part C now. So part C is one of these uh, iterative formulae questions. Find uh, the value of x2 to five decimal places. Well, let me show you how you would do it on your calculator. You first type in 2 into your calculator because that is the first value of x1. Then you type the formula in, but instead of uh, xn, you put answer value uh, where that value is. So type that all into your calculator. Be very careful to type all of that in nice and neatly. Exactly the same as this formula here, but answer value is where x to the power of n is. So therefore x2 is equal to 1.1389 five decimal places, that's four at the moment, so it's going to be a four, because the five will round the three up to a four. So there we are, that's the answer, 4x2. Now moving on to the second part here, uh, find the x coordinate to five decimal places. Well, what you have to do now is bash the equals button, keep on bashing it until the number doesn't change on your calculator screen, because as you continue on the iterative process, the solution gets more accurate and more accurate and more accurate. That's why you're just going to bash the equals button. And that's going to give us x equals 1.1560 zero to five decimal places. Now the way we're going to have to prove this is by going lower bound and upper bound and then proving that there is a change of sign between these this root here, so upper bound and lower bound. The lower bound is going to be 1.56454 uh, five, five. no, 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 it's going to be 1.565, no, 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 because the zero is there, so the zero will have to drop down to a 9.5, so it would be 4, 9.5, that would be the lower bound on this one here, and the upper bound would be 1.15650 uh, oh, 5, it should be 6 decimal places here, one more than we require, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, they're both right. So let's now substitute in the um, upper bounds and the lower bounds into this expression up here, because we're looking for the derivative to be equal to 0, so dy by dx evaluated at 1.156495 uh, will equal, so let's type in, let's do the, uh, in fact, let's do the um, upper bound first, so dy by dx evaluated at 1.156505 uh, so that's going to be Oh, a very, very small number here, so it's going to be 0 0.0000000, six zeros, and then six, four. So that's positive, basically. And now let's move on to the lower bound one, so 1 1.56495, and substitute in the lower bound, and that's going to be minus 0 0.4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 2, 2, and that's negative, and I'm not going to do it, but then you have to write your conclusion, because my pen's a bit sketchy here, uh, then you have to write your uh, conclusion, which is, given that there is a change of sign in between 1.156495 and 1.156505, um, there is a root in between these two values here, so therefore the solution can be written as 1.15650, um, rounded to the nearest five decimal places. So there we are, that's your answer for this question here. So the answer is 1.15650. You have to prove it by doing an upper bound and a lower bound. And given that you're trying to find a stationary point, it's important you plug it into this formula here because that is what you're trying to find equal to zero. So there we are, that's the answer for question seven there, worth 10 marks in total. Let's move on to question eight.